Hello and welcome. I'm Jeff Miller, a technical solutions architect with Cisco Systems. Today we're going to be covering a fairly common task, I believe, uh, that I get asked about quite often within the uh, ACI implementations is when I'm going to be migrating an SVI or an HSRP gateway from traditional Nexus world into the new ACI fabric. Right, so you either do this before you do host migrations or after or in the middle, right? But at some point, you're going to migrate the gateways from the traditional uh, Nexus world or your legacy switching world into the ACI fabric. So I thought it'd be good just to show um, kind of how that's done uh, in, in my lab scenario. So I set this up. And here's a diagram that I put together that is basically what we're going to be doing. So you'll notice on the left hand side, we've got our Nexus switches, two switches running in XOS mode. Uh, the gateway is hosted on these switches, so the gateway address is 172.22.120.1. This is an HSRP address. So we're going to be shutting down the VLAN interfaces, which will ultimately shut down the HSRP address, and then migrating and bringing those up in the ACI fabric. On the right hand side, you'll see our ACI leafs connected to spines and so on and so forth. We're not going to cover the ACI architecture as part of this video. But the two legacy fabric and the new ACI fabric are connected. You can see via a VPC, which is all just layer two. So our traditional VLAN.1Q trunks across. And then they both are connected to a core router, uh, in this case via BGP. So L3 outs on the ACI world and just traditional BGP routing on the NXOS world. I've got a host on the traditional side. So the migration demo 01 host is connected to the Nexus. I've got a jump box where we'll be doing all of our testing on the core router, so it's north of the fab, both fabrics. It will have a uh, utility on it where we're going to do some continuous pinging from. I've got a migration demo box 02 that's connected to the ACI fabric, so we can sit there and see how east-west traffic gets affected during migrations. And then I've also got just another, uh, I've got a domain controller within the ACI fabric where I have another ping test app running. Uh, so that you can see what goes down and the extended length of downtime uh, during a migration for east-west, as well as the one that's running on the jump box, which is north-south. Hopefully that makes sense, and I'm going to pause for a minute and get into the lab. So hold on one moment, and we'll start. Okay, so now we're going to jump into the lab, and I think what we're going to do first makes the most sense is I'm going to do a manual conversion. So in the manual conversion, we're going to log into both Nexus switches that were in the diagram, shut down those uh, VLAN interfaces, go to the ACI side, uh, and then create those constructs under the bridge domain. Okay, I've got these ping tests running. So right now, the, the two hosts in question, demo 02 and demo 01 are right here. And we'll notice, you know, they're totally green, so they haven't lost any pings. So first, let's log into the Nexus side. And we'll look at the VLAN real quick. So it's configured. We'll open up another one so we can do both at the same time or close to it. Okay. And then we're also going to grab um, show HSRP group 120. We're also going to grab the uh, virtual MAC address here. And we'll just put that in a notepad real quick. Try to make that a little bit smaller. All right, so let's put that away. And then we can jump on the ACI fabric really quick and just var validate. Um, nothing's in there yet. And 
when we do this, uh, when we're doing this, we're just basically modifying the bridge domain settings, right? So this is assuming the constructs are already built out, and I'm not going to get into that as part of this video, but it's assuming that I've already got contracts that are built even though we're not using them yet because there's no layer 3 going on. I already have EPGs that are tied to uh, bridge domains. So tied to this bridge domain here. So all we're going to focus on in this is the actual migration of the VLAN or the, uh, the gateway address, right? That's all we're focused on. So there's nothing in here yet. So no L3 outs, no IP addresses, no unicast routing. All right. So order of events, let's shut these guys down. And again, we've got our ping test running, which is at zero. So we'll log in and we'll try to do this as fast as we can manually. Interface VLAN 120. All right. So we're going to just do an order. So we're going to shut down the interface. Okay, so now there should be no connectivity. We see some connectivity popping up. It's down. We're going to enable unicast routing. And as part of that, we're also going to put in the virtual MAC address, which I believe is in the wrong format here. We'll copy that real quick. And then we're going to submit that. All right. And then we're going to add our addresses. I'm going to use the virtual address for a couple reasons. Um, you don't have to do that, but I want to use, I want to consume the virtual MAC address from the HSRP. Uh, previously so that uh, hosts don't have to re-ARP and then if you're doing something like OTV I still need um, to filter out some of those MAC addresses across sites not a requirement you could just do this with the one and change the custom MAC address although I'm not sure if that's uh, the best method you know there's there's several ways you can do this and submit that we see these popping up, connectivity restored. So we should be good now. So if we go to our ping utility, doing this manual process, these are the, these two and three are the physical addresses on VLAN 120 on the Nexus uh, one and two. This four we just created, one we obviously moved over, and these were the two hosts. So this host that's in the Nexus world lost 58 pings. If we scroll down here, this is kind of a cool utility. And the duration of outage was about a minute and 23 seconds. All right, so not super fast, but we did it manually. And it turns out it's about the same for the host that was inside. So this 102 is inside the ACI fabric, 101 is outside the ACI fabric. These, This is the north and south ping test. If I jump over to the domain controller, he lost 40 pings during that, and was there was an outage east-west of roughly 54 seconds, and lost 38 pings for the one that's in ACI, the host that's in ACI, and it was roughly 52 second outage. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. So what we're going to do here is I have an automated process. I'm going to roll back to where the um, Nexus is back in, in charge again so we're gonna roll this back and this time we're actually gonna use Postman to show how much faster it can be uh, when you automate some stuff with some simple scripts okay so now if we go back to this bridge domain we see instantly because of that script I just executed this is all back to the way it was and from our up down status, these should all switch back over. So our gateway is now back in the uh, Nexus world. I can validate that. 
I can do, uh, we did a shut here, so if I do a show, another, I should just build up arrow. So we're back to no shut again. So we're back to that. We lost a few more pings. How long was that second outage? Eight seconds. Not that that's totally relevant. I lost some more pings there. All right. What I'm going to do now that we're back is I'm going to highlight all of these. And we're going to delete the statistics and start over so it's back to zero to see how long we uh, have an outage for. So we're passing pings again. That's cool. And, and I'm not saying this is the ping is the ultimate test, but it's a good uh, temperature gauge, I guess, if nothing else, just to see what's expected. Okay, if we jump back on 101... Should be yep, increasing. All right. So now, without touching anything, I'm going to use a Postman script that uh, I created. And what this does is you go down through, and I'm going to put uh, I'll put a hyperlink in the bottom of the um, of the video here that you can pull these down if you want. These are uh, just uh, variabled out Postman scripts. I'll even include the uh, CSV file I use. But in this, we're going to log into both Nexus switches through the Annex API. Uh, we're going to pull out the, the VMAC, uh, HSRP MAC address. We're going to shut down the SVI interfaces on each one. Then we're going to log into the ACI. We're going to enable the unicast routing. We're going to create the VIP MAC address, the bridge domain virtual IP address, the bridge domain IP address, and associate a layer 3 out. Okay. I'm going to jump back in here real quick just to double check and make sure we're back the way we thought we were. Okay, so we're back to this, this configuration. We've learned everything again. And we don't have anything in here. Okay. And just so you know, I'm not going to explain Postman as part of this video. I'll make another video that is uh, probably several videos. Uh, explaining Postman and, and how I use it and, and how it's just a, it's a real good tool more from an engineering um, perspective I, I really wouldn't consider it a enterprise grade orchestration tool but certainly from getting a lot of different tasks done uh, at once or very quickly it, it's a good tool for that so I'm gonna pick through the Postman runner I'm gonna pick a CSV file that I've created we're gonna tell it it's a CSV file I'll even look at it. So these are this is parameters I set in CSV file, right? Which do everything we just did, and then we're going to start the test. So basically, that executed in 522 milliseconds. All the stuff we just did the last time, right? If I come back over to ACI, here's all those clicks that we did. <clears throat> if I log back into these switches. You know, this is now shut down, so there's not a no shut, right? So it's a down. Now, if I come back into here, it's significantly faster if you automate. I lost two pings because I did did it through an executed script. I had no recordable downtime because I only lost two pings. Okay, and again, this is the north-south aspect. If I look at this host here, it's much the same. I lost two. You know, I, I probably didn't lose any to the gateway. Maybe I lost one to the gateway resolution. I lost none. Of course, I'm north-south. I wouldn't expect to lose any of those. If I jump over to the east-west test, I lost one ping east-west from the fabric to the existing. One ping is not enough in this utility to register as an outage. So, And then if I look at the east-west, I lost one there as well. So you can see the significance increase in efficiency from using something like a postman execution uh, of something like a gateway migration I think those uh, those times are pretty tolerant for just about anybody so uh, I think I'll wrap it up with that but hopefully this was helpful just to show you guys if nothing else kind of the order in the manual process I want to show you the order of events generally what I see uh, in a successful migration and then the exact same order of events automated through something like Postman. Again, I'll include the links to these Postman uh, collections that I used here along with the uh, CSV file that I used. And um, as always, uh, 
feel free to leave feedback and any suggestions for other videos. I will continue to uh, plug away and uh, create more. Uh, also, as always, these are uh, solely intended for uh, sample use cases and uh, just examples of what, uh, what you might run into in the world of uh, modern data center, if you will. So uh, thanks for listening and watching, and uh, we'll talk to you guys later.